The Titanic is known as the most shocking shipwreck in modern history. After hitting an iceberg, over 1,500 people tragically lost their lives. This disaster had a series of unlucky events leading up to that night. Join us for 20 surprising facts about the Titanic you might not know. Number 20. The Titanic Lifeboat Story Over a century ago, on the 14th to 15th of April 1912, the Grand Titanic made headlines, not for her luxury, but for her tragic sinking. Here's a glimpse into the lifeboat tale that still echoes today. The Titanic was a marvel of her time, but did you know she carried only 20 lifeboats? That was just enough for 1,178 of her 2,209 passengers and crew. Surprising, right? This number met the safety standards back then, but those standards clearly weren't enough. Initially, the design had 48 lifeboats in mind, but someone thought fewer boats would make the ship look prettier, so they cut down the number. There were three types, 14 wooden ones holding 65 people, two wooden cutters for 40 each, and four canvas lifeboats fitting 47. As the ship's fate became clear that night, lifeboats started launching between 11.45 p.m. and 2.05 a.m., but not smoothly. Many were half empty because people didn't want to leave, the crew struggled with equipment, and there was confusion everywhere. Of the 20, only 18 boats made it away. Roughly 710 people escaped, leaving many behind. Two brave lifeboats returned to save others. Most didn't, fearing the sinking ship's pull or desperate swimmers. Those two boats rescued just nine souls from icy waters, but three of them didn't make it long after. At 4 a.m., RMS Carpathia, the closest responding ship, reached the scene. They tirelessly saved the survivors until 8.30 a.m., number 19, the engineers of the Titanic. Amid tales of luxury and survival of Titanic, there's one story that often remains in the shadows, that of the 35 brave engineers aboard. These engineers were the backbone of the Titanic. Responsible for keeping everything from engines to generators humming, they faced heat of up to 50 degrees Celsius and ear-splitting noise surpassing 100 decibels. Highly educated and the best paid on the ship, they were the unsung guardians of the vessel's heartbeat. Then, disaster struck. When the Titanic's side scraped that fatal iceberg, these engineers were among the first to gauge the severity. They quickly discerned the dire state. Five compartments flooded, with the ship designed to handle only four. They had a mere two hours before the inevitable sinking. But did they flee? No. Rooted in duty and valor, they remained at their posts, tirelessly working to pump out water, control fires, and maintain electrical power. Their efforts kept the lights on, soothing many panicked souls. They also ensured the ship's radio continued sending distress signals till the very end, and they even assisted in lifeboat launches, all the while knowing they were unlikely to make it out themselves. Tragically, none of these engineers survived, and though their bodies never saw home again, their memories did. Number 18. The Cancelled Evacuation Drill Back in 1912, the Titanic wasn't just about opulence and grandeur. It was a lesson on preparedness, or more precisely, the lack of it. Many lifeboats, instead of brimming with passengers, splashed down into the icy waters half empty. Why? A mix of reluctance, unawareness, and sheer unpreparedness. Some lifeboats even set off without anyone skilled enough to row them. And most didn't dare to return, fearing they'd be overwhelmed by desperate passengers or the pull of the sinking giant. Here's where things get a bit more intriguing. Captain Edward John Smith had planned a lifeboat drill on that fateful day. But for reasons that remain hazy, he called it off. Why? Well, it was to let people attend church. Others believed he was just too sure of the Titanic's invincibility. But as the ship met its chilling fate, this missed drill spelled doom. Think about it. The first lifeboat descended with only 28 people when it could hold 65, and the last with a mere 12, despite space for 40. Earlier in April, before leaving Belfast, a drill did take place, but only with the crew and under inspectors' watchful eyes. They gave a thumbs up to the lifeboat plan. A grave miscalculation, as history showed us. Number 17. Unearthing Titanic Secrets The mystery of the Titanic's final resting spot had puzzled many for decades. 
Numerous brave attempts with sonar and cutting-edge tools tried to unveil its location, but the ocean kept its secret well guarded. Then, in 1985, the curtain was finally lifted. A joint French-American team, led by Jean-Louis Michel and Robert Ballard, had a breakthrough. Using a nifty underwater gadget named Argo, with its cameras and sonar, they ventured where no one had succeeded before. On the 1st of September in that year, amidst a scattered trail of debris, they glimpsed something monumental. The Titanic's bow, standing proud. Not far from it, the stern lay, though time and the catastrophe had left it less recognizable. The two sections were spread about 2,000 feet apart. News of the discovery sent ripples across the world. It wasn't just about finding a ship. It was about connecting with a piece of history. The tales of the Titanic, long told, had a renewed audience. In the years following, adventurers and scientists alike visited this underwater time capsule. They brought back images and sometimes artifacts like dishes or personal keepsakes. Museums globally now share these fragments of a bygone era. Number 16. Titanic's Wealthiest Passenger John Jacob Astor IV wasn't just a passenger on the Titanic. He was its richest. This American business tycoon had his fingers in a bit of everything. Real estate, hotels, railroads, and even a stint in the Spanish-American War as a lieutenant colonel. Born on July 13, 1864 in Rhinebeck, New York, Astor's journey to riches began early. By the time he first married Ava Lola Willing in 1891, he was already a force to be reckoned with. After their divorce, he found love again with Madeline Talmadge Force, a lady almost two decades his junior. But Astor wasn't just about business. He penned a science fiction novel, A Journey in Other Worlds, in 1894. Imagine, a tale set in the year 2000, exploring life on Saturn and Jupiter. On top of that, he had several patents to his name, from a simple bicycle brake to a peat moss gas producer. In 1898, during the Spanish-American War, Astor's courage shone. Serving under General Guy V. Henry even generously donated artillery to the U.S. government post-war. Fast forward to 1912. Astor and Madeline, expecting a baby, decided to sail home on the Titanic. They hoped their child would be born on American soil. Their lavish suite on the sea deck cost them $4,350, quite a fortune back then. Tragedy struck on April 14, 1912. As the Titanic met its icy fate, Astor ensured Madeline and her maid reached lifeboat number four. Although he wished to join, the strict women and children first policy kept him behind. The calm seas witnessed his final hours. By April 22nd, the ship Mackay Bennett recovered his body. Number 15. Did nature trick the Titanic? The Titanic's sinking on April 15, 1912 is etched in our memories. But did a quirky twist of nature play a role in this tragedy? British historian Tim Malton introduces a startling theory. A mirage might have blurred reality that fateful night. He talks about super refraction, a rare atmospheric event. In simple terms, when the air temperature does a bit of a flip-flop rising instead of falling with altitude light bends in unpredictable ways. This bending can create what's called a superior mirage, changing how objects appear in the distance. Maltan believes this might be why the Titanic's crew spotted the iceberg so late. It was there, looming, but the mirage made it seem farther away and higher than it actually was. By the time they realized, the iceberg was right in front of them, leaving hardly any time to dodge the icy giant. What's more haunting is that the illusion possibly hid the iceberg's base, the very part the Titanic fatally collided with. But the twists don't stop there. The Californian, another ship close by, might have seen the Titanic in distress. But again, the tricky light play made the Titanic appear different, smaller even. So when the Titanic sent out distress signals, the Californian's crew was left scratching their heads, unsure of what they were seeing. Malton has dug deep for evidence, from survivor accounts to old ship logs, and even detailed weather data. He shares his insights in a book, A Very Deceiving Night, and the documentary, Titanic's Final Mystery. While not every historian nods in agreement, Malton's theory nudges us to think about the unexpected roles nature can play in shaping history. Number 14. The Lost Key and Titanic's Fate 
Binoculars, those handy tools that bring distant things closer, might have played a role in the Titanic story. On that dark night of April 14, 1912, these instruments could have been the unsung heroes. But, for some reason, they weren't at hand when most needed. Some whispers say the binoculars, meant for the crow's nest, were locked away. And the key to that locker was with David Blair, an officer who got shuffled to another ship right before the Titanic's journey began. He didn't just leave the ship, he inadvertently took the key with him. There's even a postcard he penned to a family member, speaking of his own heartache about missing out on the Titanic's maiden voyage. The ship's lookouts, Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, mentioned they scanned the waters without binoculars. Would spotting the fatal iceberg have been easier if they had them? That's the million-dollar question. Yet tales differ. Some say those binoculars never sat in a locker but were forgotten in Blair's room. Others hint that maybe he took them along. And while some argue that the night was so tricky, no binoculars would have helped. It makes you wonder about other binoculars on board. Why weren't those used? Number 13. The Iceberg's Unexpected Journey Normally, it's a rare sight to find these ice giants venturing so far south. This particular one was a behemoth, having displaced close to a billion tons of seawater as it broke free. Picture it slowly ever so slowly, making its way down the narrow Ilulisat East Fjord. Then it was swept up by the Labrador Current, pulling it southwards and closer to the ship's path. Most icebergs, by the time they get this far south, have withered away considerably. But not this one. Perhaps it flipped, showing a fresh face to the world untouched by the harsh elements. Or maybe its origin from a dense part of the Greenland ice sheet gave it the resilience to persist. Now, nature has its way of being unpredictable. The winter of 1911 to 1912 was unusually mild and tempestuous. This weather brewed the perfect storm of conditions, releasing more icebergs from Greenland's grip. Strong winds played their part, too, guiding them right into the North Atlantic shipping lanes. Captain Edward Smith, steering the mighty Titanic, received iceberg warnings. But trust in his ship's strength kept him on course. Until that night when the ship met ice. After the collision, the Titanic met its tragic end early on April 15, 1912, taking with it many souls. The iceberg? It traveled on, eventually surrendering to the warm embrace of southern waters. Number 12. Titanic's Dummy Funnel Back in those days, the number of funnels on a ship wasn't just a matter of function, but of flair and prestige. Passengers believed more funnels meant a mightier ship, so to keep up with the competition, particularly the renowned Cunard Line with their four funneled ships, the White Star Line had a clever idea for the Titanic. Three of Titanic's funnels did the heavy lifting, carrying away smoke and steam from the roaring engines. But that fourth one? It was there for looks, making the ship symmetrical and impressive. But don't let that fool you into thinking it was entirely useless. This imposter had a few tricks up its sleeve. It helped vent smoke from places like the kitchens and the smoking room. Plus, it played a role in bringing fresh air into the turbine room. Inside this dummy funnel was a hidden ladder, leading to a crow's nest, a special lookout point for spotting potential dangers in the waters. But as the Titanic met its tragic fate that chilly night in 1912, even this fake funnel couldn't hold its stance. During those heart-wrenching moments as the ship sank, witnesses say the fourth funnel stood its ground until the ship's stern lifted skyward, only to then tumble backward. There's talk that its collapse might have been another trouble for those trying to escape the ship's upper decks. Number 11. Lost Souls of the Titanic Of the hundreds who perished, only 328 bodies were pulled from the cold waters. These were taken by ships to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Of them, 119 found their final rest in the sea, while the rest reached the land. 59 were first-class passengers, 56 traveled second-class, 63 were third-class, and 31 were crew members. But what about the rest? Some were too damaged, others simply unrecognizable. The sea had taken its toll, and the lack of personal effects made identification almost impossible. Now, think about this. There was no passenger list. Names got mixed up and many third-class passengers boarded under assumed identities. Limited resources at the time added to the confusion. Some families couldn't bring themselves to claim their kin, while others simply couldn't afford to. 
while 328 bodies were recovered. Around 1,200 still lay lost in the vast Atlantic. Over time, the ocean's currents, marine life, and sediment concealed many of them. Explorers like Robert Ballard did stumble upon signs of the lost souls, like a pair of shoes or a coat, but chose to let them be, respecting the memories of those long gone. Number 10. Titanic's Brave Musicians Eight talented souls from different walks of life boarded the Titanic with dreams and tunes to share. They usually played in pairs across the ship, serenading guests in venues like the First Class Lounge or the charming Café Parisienne. But on that cold, fateful night when disaster struck, these musicians came together for a final performance. As chaos unfolded around them, Wallace Hartley, the band leader, rallied his team. With a strength that's hard to fathom, they began playing. There's been some debate over time about their final song. Some recall the somber strains of Nearer My God to Thee echoing across the deck, a hymn that Hartley had mentioned he'd play in such circumstances. Others remember the gentle melancholy of Songe d'Automne. Though the exact tune remains a mystery, what's crystal clear is the unwavering bravery of these musicians. They played till the very end, trading the chance to save themselves to bring a measure of peace to others. Number 9. A Silent Witness So there's this ship, the SS Californian. Sounds pretty standard, right? But the Californian story is intertwined with the Titanic, one of the most famous ship disasters ever. On that fateful night, the Californian was right there, in the North Atlantic. She'd already called it a day, stopping because of a huge field of icebergs. Captain Stanley Lord even made a call out, warning nearby ships, including the Titanic. But when the Californian spotted a light in the distance, they tried to get a chat going with their Morse lamp, but got nothing back. The ship's radio guy, Cyril Evans, even attempted to ring them up. But the Titanic was swamped with passenger messages and didn't respond. Meanwhile, the Titanic hit that infamous iceberg around 11.40 in the evening. She began her descent and shot up distress rockets. Other ships like the Carpathia caught the signals and raced over. But the Californian? Their radio guy had tucked in for the night, and no one realized the urgency of those rocket flares. By morning, when the Californian set sail again, it was too late. Over 1,500 lives were lost, while around 700 were saved by the Carpathia. The Californian did show up, but the damage was done. Public outcry was massive. Captain Lord was grilled for not coming to the Titanic's rescue. His career took a nosedive, and he spent his days trying to set the record straight. But history, it seems, had made up its mind. And just three years later, the Californian faced her end, sunk by German submarines during World War I. Yet almost all of her crew survived. Number 8. Miss Unsinkable Have you ever heard about a woman named Violet Jessup? They called her Miss Unsinkable, and when you hear her story, you'll see why. In 1911, Violet joined the crew of the Olympic, the grandest civilian ship of that era. Soon after, it faced a collision with HMS Hawk. Everyone made it out safely. Then came the Titanic in 1912. The ship's tragic end is well known, but during its sinking, a twist of fate had Violet boarding a lifeboat with a baby in her arms. By dawn, aboard the Carpathia, she reunited the little one with its mother. But Violet's trysts with the sea weren't over. During World War I in 1916, she worked as a nurse on the Britannic. The ship, now a hospital, met a German mine and began to sink. In a dash to escape, Violet leapt into the water and was soon yanked into a lifeboat. Despite a nasty head bump from the ship's spinning propellers, she was a survivor again. She sailed the seas until her retirement in 1950, and at the ripe age of 83 in 1971, she bid the world goodbye. Number 7 a grand vision with hidden flaws. When this grand vessel met a tragic end, it turns out that some overlooked design elements played a part. One main issue was the ship's watertight compartments. On paper, they sounded foolproof. The Titanic boasted 16 of these compartments. They were essentially separate sections, meant to keep water from flowing from one to the next if there was damage. But here's where the problem lay. These barriers didn't reach the top deck. They stood tall, but only up to a point above the waterline. So if the ship tilted too much, water would simply pour over into the next compartment. That night, 
when the iceberg tore into the Titanic, water began filling up the first six compartments. As the ship sank, the water rose, spilling from one compartment to the next, a chain reaction no one had anticipated. Another concern? The construction of these watertight barriers. They were made of steel plates held together by rivets. Some of these rivets couldn't handle the stress and were, to put it simply, not up to the mark. Plus, these bulkheads had gaps for pipes and wires. Many of these spaces weren't sealed off or fitted with doors to keep water out. So even small amounts of water could seep through, further weakening the ship's defenses. Number 6. Missteps on a Moonless Night The story of the Titanic is a web of choices and outcomes. Captain Edward Smith, a seasoned mariner, had the weighty task of navigating this grand vessel. But a few decisions set the Titanic on its tragic course. Captain Smith was no stranger to the seas. But on this voyage, he didn't give heed to the several iceberg warnings he received. Instead, he sailed on at a brisk 22 knots. Now, considering it was a moonless night and not the best for spotting obstacles, that was quite a pace. When the crucial moment came and the lookout spotted the lurking iceberg right ahead, Captain Smith's reactions were not as sharp as they could have been. Instead of a hard turn or a complete stop, he opted for a slight turn and reversed the engines. This move, unfortunately, didn't give the ship the nimbleness it needed to evade the giant ice mass. After the iceberg made its mark on the ship, precious time slipped away. Captain Smith took about 15 minutes before rallying his crew or sending out distress signals. He sought the opinion of Thomas Andrews, the mind behind the Titanic's design. But by the time they concluded, many paths to safety were already closing. Then there were the lifeboats that we have talked about already. The tale of the Titanic is a blend of human ambition, nature's might, and the consequences of choices made in moments of pressure. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. While everyone's been obsessed with the Titanic's underwater mysteries, imagine stumbling upon a far more chilling discovery. Just beyond the ship's debris, scientists uncovered countless bodies, eerily preserved. What's their story? Were they passengers lost in history or something even stranger? Can you solve the puzzle before it's buried again in the sands of time? The secrets of the deep beckon. The answers await. Number 5. The Real Culprit Have you ever wondered why that massive iceberg was lurking in the Titanic's path? David Olson and Russell Dusher, astronomers from Texas State University, shared a captivating twist to this story. Just a few months before the Titanic's voyage on January 4, 1912, the night sky witnessed a supermoon. Now, this isn't your typical full moon. It's brighter, it's bigger, and it's closer to our Earth. This particular evening had the moon, the sun, and our planet in a special alignment. This trio, coupled with the Earth's closeness to the sun, exerted a powerful gravitational tug on our oceans. These cosmic forces combined resulted in unusually high spring tides. The ripple effect of this? Well, some scientists believe it might have caused massive chunks of ice to break away from Greenland's glaciers. These icy giants could have been trapped near Newfoundland and Labrador. Yet those record high tides possibly set them free, guiding them south. By the time April rolled around, one of these drifting icebergs found itself in the Titanic's course. The rest, as we know, is a heartbreaking chapter in maritime history. Number 4. Titanic's Lesser Known Troubles do you know that before the grand ship met its chilling fate, it faced a series of smaller yet eerie incidents? For instance, on the day it set sail from Southampton, England, April 10th, a fierce fire raged in one of the Titanic's coal bunkers. Only by April 14th was the blaze tamed. Some crew members battled the flames' enduring burns and the sting of thick smoke. That very day, as the ship's majestic form left the harbor, she nearly danced too close with another. The SS New York Thanks to the massive pull of Titanic's propellers, the two ships flirted with disaster. They came dangerously close, just a few feet apart. A quick-thinking tugboat steered the New York clear, saving both from a potential mishap, but adding an hour to Titanic's journey. Two days later, near Queenstown, Ireland, John Coffey, a young stoker, decided the Titanic wasn't for him. He leaped overboard, opting for home over the open sea. A nearby tender boat plucked him from the chilly waters. His choice led to arrest, but he escaped the fate of so many others. 
On the fateful night itself, William Thomas Stead, a passenger, spoke of a mysterious cursed mummy sharing its tale in the first-class smoking room. Was it a tale to chill the bones, or did it carry a real curse? That very evening, Samuel Hemming, another passenger and a diligent lamp trimmer, injured his hand. But destiny favored him. After the collision, he played a role in the launch of lifeboats and, finding himself in the water, clung to wreckage until rescue. Around 28 lives were lost or touched by misfortune due to these incidents alone. Number 3. The Story of Masabumi Hosono Masabumi Hosono, a civil servant from Japan, embarked on a journey aboard the Titanic on April 10, 1912. During the chaos, Hosono, mistaken as a third-class passenger due to his appearance, faced hurdles reaching the boat deck. Yet, a glimmer of hope emerged. Two empty seats on a departing lifeboat. Without hesitation, inspired by another man's leap, he took his chance at life. His ordeal didn't end when he stepped aboard the RMS Carpathia as one of the 700 survivors. Back home in Japan, instead of a hero's welcome, he met a wall of shame. Words like coward and disgrace became synonymous with his name. Society expected him to perish with honor rather than live with the label of a survivor. His career suffered, his reputation tarnished. The very country he called home shunned him. The media was relentless, and the weight of national disappointment crushed him. Through it all, he carried his burden in silence, grappling with depression and isolation. In 1939, he passed away, but his legacy lived on. His grandson, Haruomi Hosono, drew lessons from his grandfather's trials. He learned the value of tolerance and compassion. Number 2. The Animals of Titanic When we talk about the Titanic, we often focus on the people who faced the tragedy. But let's not forget the lesser-known passengers, the animals. Yes, apart from over 1,500 humans, many animals also called the Titanic home, even if just for a short time. There were at least 12 loyal dogs on the ship. They varied from the tiny, fluffy Pomeranian to the larger and majestic Airedale Terrier. While some enjoyed the comfort of the first-class cabins with their owners, others stayed in kennels on the F-deck. But here's a heartbreaking fact. Out of those 12, only three small dogs survived. They found safety hidden in blankets or wrapped in coats and got spots in the lifeboats. Among the survivors was Lady, a Pomeranian, and Sun Yatsen, a Pekingese. Another Pomeranian, owned by Elizabeth Jane Rothschild, was almost left behind but managed to get on the RMS Carpathia. Sadly, the other nine dogs weren't so fortunate. Some, like Gamine de Picombe, a French bulldog, and Kitty, an Airedale Terrier, didn't make it out. The sinking wasn't just chaos for humans. Many dogs, freed from kennels, were seen in panic, running around the decks. It wasn't only dogs. The ship had its official cat, Jenny. Just a week before the ill-fated voyage, she became a proud mother to a bunch of kittens. They all stayed in the galley, cared for by the staff. Their fate? Still a mystery. And then there were birds, mainly with third-class passengers, dreaming of a fresh start in America. As the ship met its end, some tried to fly away, but none survived. Even the common ship residents, rats and mice, faced the same uncertainty as everyone else. Number 1. The Titanic's Final Farewell Did you know that even underwater, nothing lasts forever? Tiny, metal-eating bacteria have been munching on the ship, causing holes and rust spots all over. Some iconic parts, like the crow's nest and even the captain's bathtub, are already gone. It's like watching a puzzle lose its pieces, and scientists believe that by 2030, the whole ship might vanish. Now, with a treasure like the Titanic, it's crucial to remember and document. That's where Ocean Gate expeditions stepped in. Their mission? Dive down there every year, capture the ship's current look with cameras, and keep track of all the changes. Plus, they keep an eye on the ocean critters who've made the Titanic their home. Think about the crabs scuttling about and corals clinging to the ship's sides. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.